Did you know that one of the world's tallest skyscrapers has been abandoned in China since 2015? Or that there was once a capital city six times the size of New York, completely deserted in the Burmese jungle? In this new episode of Looking For, I'd like to take you on a tour of four mega-projects that turned out to be bitter failures. North Korea isn't exactly known as the hottest tourist destination at the moment, but it hasn't always been reticent to welcoming foreign tourists. In June 1989, thousands of visitors were even scheduled to attend the International Youth and Student Festival just one year after the Seoul Olympic Games. In order to welcome visitors and at the same time to shine on the international stage, North Korea undertook the construction of what was to become the world's tallest hotel. A symbolic construction, moreover, since it perfectly illustrates the rivalry between Seoul and Pyongyang. Indeed, the North Korean hotel was also aiming to dethrone, or rather shatter, the record set in 1986 by the South Korean builder, which built the Western Stamford Hotel in Singapore, the world's tallest hotel at the time, with its 226 meters. A year later, North Korea began construction on the Ryugyong Hotel to be inaugurated on the eve of the 1989 festival. But after major delays due to a lack of materials, construction was brought to a halt in 1992, just after the collapse of the USSR and its financial support. However, the final height of this giant pyramid was nevertheless reached and the Ryugyong Hotel still dominates the North Korean capital from its 330 meters high. But since then, this hotel, which looks like something out of the movie Blade Runner, has never filled up, gradually earning the nickname of Ghost Hotel. What's more, the building's 105 floors are completely empty. It would be 16 years before the pyramid finally got some windows thanks to an Egyptian builder, but the interior fittings were still at a standstill and the building remains abandoned. South Korean media reports that completion of the Rugyong Hotel would cost over $2 billion, an exorbitant sum for North Korea, equivalent to 5% of its GDP in 2015. To date, there is no official information on the progress of the project, but it's easy to doubt whether construction will resume, given its high cost and its relative necessity. Now let's continue our little world tour of mega-projects near Beijing, China, to find out why one of the world's tallest skyscrapers has been completely abandoned. At a height of 597 meters, the Golden Finance 117, located in Tianjin, holds the world record for the tallest unoccupied building. But why is this gigantic tower, which ranks sixth among the world's tallest skyscrapers, has been abandoned? Well, to find out, we have to go back to 2008, when plans for the project were unveiled. Initiated by billionaire Pan Sutong, chairman of Hong Kong-based investment company Goldin Financial, the skyscraper bearing the company's name was to be the centerpiece of a brand new luxury business and residential district on the outskirts of Tianjin. A 128-story tower, 117 of which were to house offices, housing, restaurants, and even an observation deck at 580 meters above the city. It was also to house the world's highest indoor swimming pool at 564 meters. To top it all off, a diamond-shaped roof was to bring the building to a beautiful close. But unfortunately, the Golden Finance 117 would soon be condemned to become nothing more than a ghostly skyscraper lost in the Tianjin landscape. Construction began in 2008 and was due for completion in 2014, but the effects of the 2008 financial crisis have severely impacted the portfolio of investment company Golden, forcing the company to halt work in early 2010. But hope was not lost, as construction resumed a year later when the financial markets stabilized. It would then take another four years for the building to reach its final height in September 2015. However, the Chinese market collapsed that year, and Golden's stock plummeted by 67%, costing Hong Kong billionaire Pan Sutong $13 billion. Following the Chinese stock market crash of 2015, the investment company will suspend all work indefinitely. 
a succession of economic events disastrous for the company that put an end to the completion of what should have been one of the world's tallest skyscrapers. To date, construction has still not resumed, and there's every chance that this situation will continue for a long time to come, given the scale of China's real estate crisis. A little more unusual this time, I'd like to take you to the north of Turkey, south of the small town of Mudurnu, where you'll find a strange real estate complex made up of hundreds of abandoned villas. A setting worthy of a Disney park, except that no one has fun here, or even lives here. Welcome to Burj Al Babas, Turkey's ghost village. Originally intended as a prime tourist destination, a luxurious residential complex for a wealthy clientele. Construction began in 2014 and was scheduled for completion in 2018. The real estate program included a complex of 732 identical villas with balconies and traditional Turkish interiors. The complex was also to include a shopping center, restaurants, a hot spring and a mosque. A tourist attraction which on paper should have made foreign investors envious, particularly those from the Gulf states who were targeted. At the beginning, the project seemed to be going smoothly, with almost half of the villas sold at an average price of $450,000. But in 2018, construction was suddenly halted when the oil market experienced fluctuations. Gulf investors, hard hit by this tumultuous period, ceased to support the Burj Al Babas complex. As a result, only 587 of the planned 732 villas were built. To make matters worse, the Turkish economy was in a difficult situation with inflation climbing to 25%. Most buyers of the Burj Al Babas then quickly pulled out given the rising construction costs. As a result, the Turkish developer behind the complex found itself $27 million in debt in 2019. Given the company's financial difficulties, Turkish courts will order it to file for bankruptcy and halt all construction. The developer has attempted to appeal this decision, justifying his ability to overcome this crisis by declaring that it would be enough to sell 100 villas to pay off the debt. But these sales never took place, and the hundreds of castles of the Burj Al Babas are still today abandoned. Worse still, many of the villas have already fallen into ruin. Unless another developer decides to resume construction, Burj Al Babas is condemned to remain a $200 million ghost town lost in the lands of northwestern Turkey. To conclude this video, we're off to Southeast Asia to introduce you to Naypyidaw, Myanmar's ghost city. Built in secret by the military junta, this new capital, six times the size of New York, emerged from the Burmese jungle in the early 2000s. While changing capital over time is nothing new, the reasons are stranger than elsewhere. In November 2005, Myanmar's leader officially announced his decision to move the capital to the center of the country. Warned the evening before, all Rangoon civil servants had to leave the city for Naypyidaw, 320 kilometers to the north. The reasons for this sudden change of capital are still unclear. Some say that the leaders of the military junta feared a military attack on Rangoon, the territory's most populous city with 7 million inhabitants. Others believe that this sudden move was prompted by the advice of astrologers working for the head of the military junta, Than Shui. The idea of protecting himself from popular protest movements is also evoked. According to the experts, the creation of Naypyidaw would have cost nearly $4 billion, a colossal budget which enabled the construction of numerous infrastructures, such as these immense roads, the widest of which has 20 traffic lanes. Given the small number of vehicles on these roads, rumors have it that they are mainly intended for landing military aircraft in the event of war. The city offers numerous shopping centers and luxury hotels, four golf courses, a huge zoological garden, and even a replica of Rangoon's Great Schwedigan Pagoda, entirely covered in gold leaf. Enough to attract many tourists and locals alike. The problem is that hardly anyone lives in Naypyidaw. For example, the city has an airport which can handle 3.5 million passengers a year. But on a busy day, there would be no more than a dozen people. The same is true for tourist attractions and hotels. 
Designed to accommodate over a million inhabitants, the new capital would in fact only be home to a few hundred thousand, most of whom live on the outskirts. A cruel lack of inhabitants, which can be explained by the fact that housing prices in the new capital are unaffordable for most Myanmar citizens. Other factors, such as the lack of health infrastructure, schools and job opportunities, are also preventing Rangoon's residents from investing in the new capital. As a result, the city has gradually earned the nickname of Ghost Town. In any case, if you'd like to find out more about the city and its history, I invite you to watch my video on the subject right here. Thank you for watching and see you soon on Looking For Goodbye.